My name is Lilla and I'm a program advisor here at BCIT. I'm joined by my fellow program advisor, Shelly Schumas, and Siobhan O'Kelly, uh, who is the Student Entry and Transition Coordinator in Student Success. We also have representatives from Program Advising and BCIT's International Student Center in the Q&A to help answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Tonight, we will provide information on how to start, advance, or change a career with the BCIT education. We are using Zoom's webinar, so we won't be able to see or hear you. So your opportunity to ask questions will be through the Q&A function um, at the bottom or the side of your screen. So BCIT would like to acknowledge that our campuses are located on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish nations, which include the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Oops. So here is tonight's agenda. If you have any questions on topics that aren't covered here, you can use the Q&A function. Um, it is a function that is used for general questions, um, and it's not designed to be a chat. So if you do need um, a more extensive dialogue, you're always welcome to contact us at Program Advising for some additional assistance. And we'll provide our contact information at the end of this presentation. Uh, another way you can look for info is through our website, bcit.ca. And the top right of our page, you can see a search bar and you can type in keywords there, and you can also find uh, information through that. Uh, any links that are in the slides will be provided to you in a handout that will be sent um, shortly after the presentation. And now Shelley will introduce why part-time studies at BCIT could be a good fit for you. Thank you, Willa. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Shelley Schumas, and I'm a program advisor in our part-time studies department. So tonight I'm going to talk about why you'd want to enroll in part-time studies at BCIT and how does it work? Okay, so at part-time studies, we have over 1,000 part-time studies courses to choose from. So we, they span six sectors. So you can choose from applied and natural sciences, business and media, computing and IT, engineering, health sciences, and trades and apprenticeships. So with such a wide selection, you can choose individual courses or uh, to gain the skills that you need, or you can work towards completing like a full program and graduating with a credential. So why part-time studies at BCIT? Well, one thing is that uh, we have applied learning. So this does set us apart from other institutions. At BCIT, we provide theoretical education with practical skills training. So this means you learn by doing. The second reason is career development. So part-time studies allows you to start a new career or make a career change by taking evening classes, classes online or on the weekend. So if you are working full-time or you have other priorities during the day, it allows you to take classes in the evenings. Um, it also allows um, students and professionals to upskill and keep competitive in the current labor market. So if you just need a course, you can do that in part-time. Accessibility. Many programs do not have formal entrance requirements or prerequisites, so transcripts or supporting documentation is usually not required for most. Um, this makes part-time studies very accessible. So it is expected you to have a uh, minimum English proficiency to do well in your studies. Another great advantage um, is flexibility. So you can register for course by course registration. Um, there is academically, there's no minimum course load. Um, you can start in any term and enrollment into programs is accepted year round. Um, for programs, um, they can take anywhere from three to seven years to complete. It depends on the program you're choosing. Um, so this makes part-time studies very flexible. And lastly, our reputation. BCIT has a very good reputation for small class sizes. 
um, which allows you to be trained, coached, and mentored by industry prevent professionals who, who serve as your instructors. So they design classes to develop skills relevant to the industry, and this makes our jobs extremely job ready with the required skills employers are looking for. Um, this gives us an excellent track record for uh, employment across British Columbia and Canada. Okay, so just to let everyone know, our registration is currently open for our spring and summer term um, that had opened already. And um, so there may be a few classes that have later start dates in June or July, but still may have seats available. Um, and the fall 2022 term opened on Wednesday, May 25th at nine o'clock. So if you would like to register for some classes for September, now is the time. Okay, so on this next slide, I'm gonna go over um, how you can uh, take a course um, at BCIT, the course delivery options. So you could either take a course um, on campus, blended or entirely online. So if you're going to be at campus, um, they will be held at Burnaby or our downtown campus, which is close to the SkyTrain. Um, so that is uh, important to note. Um, if you are, when you are a part-time study student, um, when you register for a class, um, we also wanted to make sure that you read the important information section on the class description, because a lot of times there's important information for you to know. It could be in-person exams, um, or you could, um, proctoring could be possible, um, but uh, it's just good to read that section. Um, and some distance and part-time may have labs um, that you'll have to come in for. So just important to note. Um, so for the online classes, um, we have classes that are scheduled class meeting times. Those are called synchronous. So we would be meeting with a class virtually. We also have asynchronous, uh, which um, that doesn't have an exact class meeting time, but you still have due dates for assignments. Um, the course, um, the duration is usually 12 weeks for each class, and that's listed on the course registration page. Um, if a credential can be done entirely online, it will be listed at the top of the program page as distance slash online learning. Okay, so next slide here, I'm going to talk about how to start a BCIT and we do have a guide to to start with that. Okay, so in part time studies, um, this, uh, this slide, I'm going to talk about how you would start and we get this question a lot and uh, Willa will go into this um, further and further details later in the presentation. Um, but basically the first step is to choose your program or choose a course. Um, there's a link on the slide there. Um, you can see it's bcit.ca forward slash PTS. Um, so you can start by looking there and figuring out what, what you want to take. Again, many programs are open enrollment. Um, English 12 is expected. However, um, currently there's no proof required. Some programs do require entrance requirements. Um, such as financial management or accounting. Um, so um, it's good just to read the entrance requirements. Um, if, if you are not sure what course you'd wanna choose, um, you could always attend. Uh, there's many information sessions uh, all the time. Uh, so you can check that or YouTube, we have lots posted. Um, the business and media has info sessions this month as well as computing. And um, you can also book an appointment with program advising. We do offer complimentary 30 minute meetings. So a lot of times we can help guide you through which course selection. Um, the next step is to register for your classes and that uh, you must pay um, upon registration or you will be dropped. So that's one important thing to note. Um, declare is the third step and um, if you want to declare your program, um, if you want to continue and complete a credential. Um, if you are an international student or if you are um, requesting student loan funding, you will need to declare. Okay, so time commitment. So if you are working full time, you are looking at for one three credit course, six to nine hours, uh, including schedule class 
hours. So that's what you're looking at in terms of time commitment. All right. So, yeah. All right. So the next slide here um, is going to be discussing laddering. And so laddering your credentials at BCIT. So in part time, um, we have a lot of options for laddering. So one thing you could do is start with a micro credential. These are very short four week co uh, courses. They are for credit. Um, and these digital batches, um, you can link to your LinkedIn profile and, and they're in all six sectors. And um, I encourage you to look on our website to find out more details on the uses of micro credentials. They're very new uh, to BCIT. Um, we have, for example, mass timber construction, cybersecurity. There's another one on Canadian employment readiness. So um, some are online, some are in person. So definitely have a look. Um, the next um, credential that we offer is a statement of completion. It's a very short one, um, usually about four classes. And then we have associate certificates and certificates. These are all short specialized training programs that uh, combine applied theory and practical skills for a particular field. Um, we also offer diplomas, which are a little bit longer areas of study and prepare you for employment and technological, technical, paraprofessional and professional occupations. We also have bachelor's degrees in all six sectors as well as master's. We also have some advanced studies for those who have college university graduates. Um, so we have advanced diplomas and um, some graduate certificates. Um, so the laddering model at BCIT is basically you, you can start with an associate certificate, which is a smaller credential or a certificate. And then um, if you decide you want to continue with your education, um, many of those courses can count towards a diploma. And then later on, you can apply to a degree. So um, that's kind of a, a what's a laddering model. Um, so what example is um, you could do computerized accounting and then you could do a diploma and then a bachelor's degree. OK, so and next Will is going to come back and discuss all the six sectors. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, so as you can see on the screen here, we offer um, programs and courses within these six sectors. Um, if you are an international student, uh, it's important to check the list of programs that are accepting international students. Uh, so the link is on the screen there and you are required to have valid status in Canada prior to enrolling. So under applied and natural sciences, we offer programs in these areas that are listed here. Um, if you are interested, you can contact the department directly for these types of programs. The department's contact information would be on the program page under the contact us section. We have over 300 courses and over 50 programs in business and media uh, in the areas that are um, listed on the screen here. If you are interested in a particular area, you can attend an info session. So as Shelley mentioned, uh, business programs hold regular info sessions throughout the year. Um, something to note is that our part-time accounting programs now have entrance requirements. So it's important to check the program page for what those entrance requirements are. If you do have any questions on how to meet these entrance requirements, uh, you can always contact our office. In computing and IT, we offer credentials, again, in the areas that are shown on the screen here. We also offer three new micro-credentials that you could consider taking. We have a programming degree pathway program that can be completed entirely through part-time studies. Uh, if you are interested in beginning part-time studies in our computing and IT area, 
Uh, we do have some courses that can help you uh, gauge your interest or uh, help you figure out which area of um, computing you would be most um, interested in. So COMP 1002, this is a um, course on how a computer works, how to save files, um, just the basic um, operating of a computer. So it could be a good course if you're not quite confident yet on um, using all aspects of a PC. And the other three courses that you see there, um, each of these are core courses that are um, an introduction to the specific areas here. So the 1516 is um, a programming course and it'll introduce you to Python. Uh, 1630 is an introductory course in uh, database design and 1850 is an introductory course in web development. And each of our part-time computing programs will require one of these courses to be completed ahead of time. So for engineering, there are many employment opportunities in the construction industry, especially in BC. Uh, we are experiencing a skilled labor shortage. Um, so there are many opportunities in our construction industry and it is a key contributor to our economy. Um, if you are interested in any of these areas, uh, you're welcome to go to our website and do some research on it. Um, most of these do not have formal entrance requirements. Um, some of them that do are our interior design programs. So again, if you have more questions about those entrance requirements, uh, please contact Program Advising. So for health sciences, many programs and courses are online, um, but as Shelley mentioned, there may be some um, in-person labs or practicums. Some health sciences programs have entrance requirements uh, a lot of them are for uh, continuing professional development, uh, such as our specialty nursing programs are for those that are already RNs. Um, the occupational health and safety programs, that is something that you could enter as um, an entry level position if you wanted to. Um, again, if you had more questions, feel free to uh, contact us. For trades, we offer uh, individual refresher courses in these areas through part-time studies. So if you are already a tradesperson and let's say you're thinking of writing your um, Red Seal exam, we have um, prep courses for that. And uh, those with formal trade education uh, and or work experience may be eligible to enroll in our Bachelor of Technology program in technology management, uh, which is a degree that was specifically created for um, tradespeople or uh, technicians uh, to have the opportunity to earn a degree. So, if all of those areas sound great and you want to start as soon as possible, uh, your first step is to register for courses. Uh, as Shelley mentioned, registration for fall 2022 is currently open and details on how to register are on this slide. Uh, some points I want to make are for tuition. It's the sum of the cost of the individual courses. And again, English proficiency is expected of all students, though proof of English proficiency is not required in order to register for most courses. Uh, if you want more information, you can enter the word register in the search bar. Um, at the top of our website and you'll be able to find a page that has step-by-step -step instructions uh, on how to register. Uh, 
If you want to enroll in a program and um, graduate with a credential, you must submit a program declaration. So it's like a program application, but because most programs don't have formal entrance requirements of part-time studies, we call it a declaration. Um, so you can see here, uh, details on how to do so are on this slide. Um, to the right here is just a screenshot of what your um, what the application portal will look like. And for part-time studies, make sure you click on um, declare a part-time studies program. Um, there will be some part-time programs that do appear under the apply for a program um, category. Those would be part-time studies programs that have entrance requirements, uh, such as accounting, uh, interior design, and uh, graphic design. There is a possibility to have previous education or experience count for credit toward a BCIT course, either through transfer credit or prior learning assessment recognition. Transfer credit can be requested at the time you declare your program or after you are enrolled. Factors such as how long ago the course was taken, um, what your final grade was, and how similar the course is to the one at BCIT um, help with making a decision if your transfer credit would be approved or not. Prior learning assessment recognition can be requested at any time uh, through the department. And again, you can find more details about these two on our website. As for funding your education, we do have um, a department at BCIT called Student Financial Aid and Awards. And on their page, they have information on which part-time studies programs are eligible for funding um, and also information on what your options are for part-time loans and grants. Um, it's also worth finding out if your employer would be able to pay for your education. And if your employer is wanting to pay for your education, there is an option for them to be invoiced directly for your courses. So we call this sponsorship. Um, you can contact this office directly um, if you're interested or if your employer is interested in this route. Uh, Student Financial Aid and Awards does not handle this. It's a separate department. Uh, so the link is there and the link will also be provided um, in that handout that I mentioned earlier. And now we'll hear from Siobhan from our Student Life Office, um, who will introduce us to what Student Success does here at BCIT. Thanks, Lilla. Hi, everyone. I'm Siobhan O'Kelly. I work in BCIT Student Life Office, which is part of the Student Success Division um, at BCIT. Um, so we're really here to support students to achieve success uh, both in the classroom and at, outside of the classroom while they're at school. Um, and so one of the ways that we do this is we um, provide information about student services um, at BCIT to support uh, your learning and, and personal success. Um, so I'm going to take, sorry, I think that's the printer in the background, if you can hear that. Um, I'm just going to highlight a few of the key services that um, you might want to access while you're here at BCIT. Um, this isn't an all-inclusive list, so um, just be aware that there's much more um, than the services that I'll be highlighting tonight. Um, but it's also really important that you understand that even though uh, you might just be in part-time studies at BCIT, you can access all of these services um, and that there are services available on more than uh, one campus as well. Um, so I'm gonna just take us through some of these. Um, so the first one I have here is Indigenous Initiatives. So uh, BCIT's Indigenous Initiative um, provides a comfortable and welcoming place for students, families, and staff through the Indigenous Gathering Place, uh, which is located on the Burnaby campus. 
Um, so in addition to the gathering space, um, Indigenous Initiatives also offers an Indigenous peer mentorship program. Um, they can help with referrals to other services and supports. Um, and they also have Indigenous advisors um, and can provide support for funding applications and um, they run sweat lodge ceremonies. So there's a host of services um, and supports that they offer. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have student financial aid and awards. Um, so they can help you determine and apply for sources of funding um, for your education. I think Willa already touched on this a little bit, um, so this might be a little bit repetitive, but uh, they can help with sources of funding. Um, they can help you set up an appointment with the financial aid and awards advisor by phone, virtually or in person. Um, so I, it would be great to touch base with them early on um, to see what options are available for you. Uh, we also have accessibility services at VCIT, um, so they can help level the playing field by facilitating academic accommodations to students with visible or invisible um, and permanent or temporary functional limitations. Um, so an example of this is if you break a bone halfway through the semester and all of a sudden uh, maybe you break your hand and you can't uh, write, right? You can take tests or you can take notes. Uh, you could meet with an accessibility services advisor uh, or rehabilitation specialist, um, and they would work with you and your doctor to determine what your limitations are. So in this instance, you know, not being able to write, take notes, um, and then they might come up with a plan for um, put, uh, putting in place accommodations to help support you so that you can continue your learning. So in this instance, uh, they might give you uh, they might actually pair you up with another student in class who can take notes for you and share those notes with you. And they might give you um, access to software where you could do um, speech to text notes or something like that. So they'd work with you to make sure that you can still complete your coursework um, and have accessible um, or access to uh, your educational opportunities just, uh, despite any functional or uh, temporary limitations that you might have. Um, one thing to note about accessibility services is that uh, because they do require medical documentation, it can take some time for that process to be put in place. Um, so it's really important if you know that you have something that might require an accommodation, um, it's best to connect with them earlier and start that process as soon as possible rather than waiting um, till mid-semester. Uh, the next service we have here is student health services. Um, so they're located on the Burnaby campus um, and they provide medical care for all BCIT students, regardless of whether you're part-time or full-time or if you're on a different campus um, than Burnaby. So they have a team of nurses, doctors, and a psychiatrist. Um, so currently they're offering, um, oh, sorry, currently they're not accepting walk-ins. Um, so it's by appointment only. Um, so you can make an appointment by uh, calling them and setting that up. And they are doing virtual appointments right now too. Uh, we also have counseling and student development at BCIT. So all BCIT students, um, again, regardless of whether you're full-time or part-time, um, have access to free and confidential counseling services. So we have five counselors at BCIT um, with in-person appointments available at the Burnaby and downtown campuses, uh, but we also offer virtual appointments. Um, and we have virtual service rooms at um, the Anasis Island, Aerospace and Marine campuses. So um, if you don't have a private space to do those counseling appointments virtually, um, you can actually do that uh, from a campus location in a confidential space. Um, counselors can help students navigate a range of different topics. Um, so the top five reasons why students at BCIT access counseling are uh, anxiety, depression, relationships, stress reduction, um, and academic uh, progress or pressures. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an, uh, of an example of the different things that you could talk to a counselor about, but those are not limited. So anything that you have on your mind, you really can take advantage of that service. Um, and you can call to book an appointment with any of those counselors. Um, the second to last service on my list is recreation services. So this is a fun one. Um, so recreation services offers a range of services to students. They have fitness centers on the Anastas Island campus, the aerospace technology campus, the Burnaby and Marine campuses as well. Uh, the Burnaby Campus Fitness Center was renovated in 2016, um, and it offers a large training facility with the latest strength equipment and cardio machines. 
um, in addition to fitness centers, uh, the recreation services team also runs uh, fitness classes. So they've got things like boot camp and uh, I think they had a boxing studio at one point. There's a climbing wall there as well. So lots of different things that they offer. Um, they also run intramural leagues. Um, so sports ranging from soccer uh, to volleyball and basketball. Um, so that's a really fun thing to sign up um, if you're looking to get social at BCIT. Um, they start at the beginning of each semester and, and can be a really great opportunity to meet other students. Um, uh, you can participate in free trial week um, to test out a fitness class for free. Um, and then for intramurals, you can sign up as a team or as an individual as well. So if you don't know anyone, you can you can do it that way. Um, yeah. There's also one other service that's not on here, but um, I do want to make a note of um, career services at BCIT. So uh, the BCIT Student Association um, offers uh, their own set of career services for students. So they've got things like resume workshops and interview skills workshops and networking events. Um, so being that BCIT, you know, really wants to make sure that our graduates are job ready, I would highly encourage taking advantage of those services because they are available again, both to full time and part time study students. Um, and they're a great way to really um, make sure that your resume um, interview and uh, networking skills are, are up to date. Um, but on top of that, BCIT also runs an online job posting um, service called eJobs. Um, so you can access job postings for free. Um, they're usually, um, like BCIT works with employers to get um, job postings that are relevant to the programs that we offer at BCIT. So that's a great way to look for jobs that are aligned with what you're studying and can help you build your skills um, while you're at school or at least um, help you uh, make that transition to working after you've completed your program. Um, and the Student Life Office is also on there. So that's our office. Um, we help with things like this. Uh, so promoting services to students, to new students um, and prospective students. Uh, we also uh, run the orientation programming at BCIT, which is called Kickstart. Um, so if any of you have started getting emails about that, um, that's through our office as well. And we also support students transitioning to BCIT. So once you've been admitted and you're starting your program, uh, we try to provide um, information and support throughout your journey at BCIT so that you can make sure that you're staying well and um, staying on task with your studies the whole time through. So we're really um, kind of like a central point for connecting you to services and supports um, and making sure that your time here is um, the best that it can be. Um, so if you ever want to connect with us, um, you can send us an email um, and we're here to help. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Shelly. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Siobhan. That was very informative about student success. So um, yeah, so uh, next slide here. Um, I'm just going to overview uh, program advising and uh, what we can help you with and all our contact information is is there on the slide as well. Um, so uh, if you do need help, we have offering, um, we have virtual appointments as 30 minutes as well as in-person um, and those are complimentary. Um, so we can help you with uh, determining what the right program is to meet your career goals, course options, selection for part-time studies programs, transfer credit, how does it work, um, advanced placement, what's that about, uh, work and life balance at BCIT and, and all of the student services as well that Siobhan uh, mentioned. Uh, we also kind of connect students to what's available in that as well, um, as well as the program laddering and how much does course cost. So we can help you with a lot of uh, different things. So I would recommend that you book an appointment. Uh, the number's there on the screen. Um, since it will be at a scheduled time. And we do callbacks as well, which could be arranged um, for you to get a callback from an advisor. All right, so, um, so that brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, we wanted to thank you so much for attending. Um, it's been a great turnout. Um, and as Willis said, we will send a follow-up email to everyone. And, um, and now's the time to uh, ask some questions. Um, if you have any last minute questions that you want answered um, in the Q&A function. Um, and uh, we also have um, student life here as well. So 
if you want to, um, you could um, have a question in the chat. But um, we thank you very much for coming. So, and um, good night. And uh, if you wanted to stay and ask a few questions, we could read a few from um, that haven't been answered yet. Um, if anyone else would, uh, Willow would like to join me here. Um, yes, or anyone else uh, would like to come on and answer some questions, or if you have any questions, um, you can put them in. Okay. Um, all right. So I do see a question here from about uh, somebody that's planning to take a trade certificate. Um, um, so he's asking um, that he's entitled to benefits. Okay. As attending clubs. Um, so um, most likely um, you would, you would be able to attend clubs as Siobhan mentioned. Um, a lot of students, even part-time can have access to, to join different clubs. So part-time study students do have a lot of um, different types of advantages as same as full-time. Um, so yes, you could uh, join a, a club. Um, you just, um, the BCIT Student Association does have a lot of clubs. Um, so you could find one there if you're interested in, um, might be a good network of opportunity. Um, we could just go over um, a few questions that are commonly asked. Um, if anyone would like to stay on. Um, um, mm -hmm. Oh, I see one here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I see a question about English upgrading. So if you don't have that um, expected English 12 level of proficiency, you can upgrade your English here at BCIT. Um, you would start by um, taking two assessments, one for reading, writing, and one for speaking and listening here at BCIT. Um, if you have done another assessment uh, within the past two years, like an IELTS or a TOEFL, those could be accepted as well. Um, we need students to do an assessment test of some sort in order to be placed in the appropriate English upgrading class. Um, we wouldn't want you to take an English course that was too easy or take an English course that was too difficult. Um, and through BCIT, you can work your way up to an English 12 proficiency. Um, for domestic students, there is an opportunity for you to take these English upgrading courses free of charge through um, a grant uh, with the provincial government called the Adult Upgrading Grant. Um, our website has more information. The Student Financial Aid and Awards page um, would have that link. Um, the BCIT assessments, there is a charge and the grant will not cover uh, those assessments. Um, so if you have some more specific questions about English upgrading, uh, again, you can always contact our office. Um, yeah, Shelly, do you see a question you want to answer? Um, sure. Um, I see a question from Marjan. Uh, so she's asking about, uh, please give me more information on job postings. Um, so Siobhan did mention earlier um, that the, um, there is a e-jobs. Um, it's a, an online uh, portal that you can search for jobs if you're a BCIT student. And um, as she mentioned, there are the jobs that are posted there are, are um, related to a lot of the certificates and diplomas and associate certificates that we offer in a lot of the different types of sectors. So that's one thing you could do. Um, and uh, we do have, as Siobhan mentioned as well, we have the, a student association. Um, who does offer career um, specialists. You can make appointment. Um, they have resumes and cover letter help as well as they do hold job fairs throughout the year. So they'll all be posted and you can find them out through the association. But um, as a part-time study student, you still would have access to that even if you just take one class. So um, it's definitely advantage to take, a, take an advantage of that. Um, oh, and Siobhan just put that in the chat. She put the, that link for the e-jobs. So if anybody wants to, uh, when they become a student, sign up. 
Uh, is there an, let's see, we can answer another one here. Does Willa, did you want to answer another one? Actually, Shelly and, oh. and Willa, there's, there's mm -hmm. a question that I could answer. Um, oh, one okay, of the sure. questions was, <clears throat> excuse me, what's the best major to study if you're interested in supply chain? So if you are interested in a part-time program, I might recommend um, taking a look at the International Trade and Transportation Logistics Certificate or the Operations Management uh, Materials Management Option Certificate as well. Both of those will cover supply, supply chain. Um, courses. If you're looking at full-time, that would naturally be the Business Operations Management Diploma Program or the Global Trade and Transportation Management Diploma. Um, so if you've got further questions on that, please connect with advising program underscore advising at bcit.ca and we can talk further. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, so um, shall we answer a few more? Okay, um, so I have um, someone's asking about um, Ash, Ashka is asking about is a course completely online. Um, yes, if you do sign up for a course, um, it would be on, if it's an online course, um, it would be completely online. Sometimes um, some of our classes may have um, exams in person but it would be in the notes section but if you do sign up just um it's either going to be a synchronous course or an asynchronous course so you either would have a class meeting time or you would have a, a lecture and you would see your instructor and they would be you would go every monday night for example um or you could do an uh, asynchronous course where um, you don't have to be at a class at a certain time, but you would meet with your classmates and your instructor and, and get your assignments for the week and your group discussion. So, um, yes, there's definitely a lot of courses now we offer online. We definitely see more demand um, just since the pandemic of a lot of people preferring online. Um, but we like to offer um, a little variety. So online, in person. Uh, so everyone has a course that they can take. Okay. All right, so we're getting more questions coming in here. Uh, Willa, do you want to answer another way? Sure. Um, so I see some questions about um, links. And uh, as I mentioned, there will be an email sent after this presentation with the links that we mentioned in our presentation. So if you have questions about um, how to register for courses, the link will be in that um, document. Um, I see a question about um, English. So again, there will be links with, um, with the pages that you need to look at for entrance requirements or equivalencies. Um, and if you can't find the answer to your uh, question, you could always send us an email. Um, to get a more detailed um, answer. Here in the Q&A, it's just for really quick uh, general questions. Yes, for sure. So if you have something that's very specific, as Lilla said, um, it's best to make an appointment where we can sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and really help you um, you know, to figure out what it is that you're looking for and more better match um, you know, what your questions are. Um, we can answer more general questions uh, here. Um, I have another one here. Um, let's see. So answer live um, from Marcel, is it required to have work experience before registering for business course? Um, not in part-time studies, it's course by course enrollment. So you don't have to have work experience um, we do have people that are straight from high school that might want to just take an introductory business course. Um, so, um, though you don't have to have um, work experience um, for, for our full time programs, um, sometimes you do, but for a part time, uh, no, you could start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, shall we answer a few more here? Okay. Um, trying to keep ones that are a little bit more general. Um, let's see. 
Um, I see a theme about um, previous education. Um, so previous education being used toward completing a program at BCIT. So that may be a possibility, again, either through our transfer credit request process or our prior learning assessment recognition process. Um, there are a lot of factors in um, determining if um, a student will be um, approved for transfer credit or will be granted um, credit based on prior learning assessment recognition. Um, so again, you can take a look at the pages on our website. And if you had some further questions, you can contact our office. Um, but an important thing is that for transfer credit, you must enroll in the program before you can request for that. And transfer credit is for education only. For prior learning assessment recognition, you could request for that even before you register or enroll at BCIT. Um, and that is usually based on um, experience. All right, awesome. Okay, so I had someone ask quite a few times about what was the uh, career, they're doing a career change in human resources and what was the, um, the best route to start with that. Um, so, um, and they wanted online classes. So uh, the best route probably would to start with an associate certificate in human resources. Um, so that's seven classes. And then you can continue into a certificate and part-time. And that would be eight more classes. Some of them may not always have an online option. So you sometimes each, each, each term, the classes will be different. So sometimes it may be mostly online, but there may be one or two that are not. Uh, so you'd have to keep checking. Um, you, you can uh, continue on to a certificate. And um, with that certificate, um, you can work in human resources um, and you can register with the BCRPA uh, with uh, human resources, um, become a human resources practitioner. Um, so you can get uh, an exemption from that exam as well if you take the certificate. Uh, so it's um, for someone wanting career change, it's a really great opportunity because you can take it at night. Uh, and we have a lot of people that are doing that for HR. Okay, um, Willa, do you wanna try another question? We seem to be still getting quite a few in here. Um, yeah, I see a question about, um, some questions about whether we accept a certain program or if we accept some certain courses or if we accept a certain type of previous education. Those types of questions uh, should be directed to us through an email um, because we would need to um, get some more information from you. Um, we would need to know what kind of program or course you are wanting to enroll in. So those questions we wouldn't be able to answer quickly just through this Q&A. So I'd encourage uh, those that asked uh, those types of questions to um, email our office. Um, so I think we can just go over some of the main questions uh, that we have for um, part time. Um, um, a lot of them we've we've talked about is the English requirements, um, and and a lot of it is is can I just take one class, um, or do I need to sign up for a program? So the answer is you can sign up for just one course. Um, we do have open enrollment; it's course by course registration. Um, so you do not have to take a full program if you don't want to. Um, you could start with one course and see how it goes. Um, if you really like it, you can continue and maybe do a, a statement of completion, which is four courses um, usually, or you could do a, a associate certificate, um, but you can just start with one course and um, it's fairly simple to register. Um, you just need your BCIT student number and um, you can pay um, through your online banking for a course and you do need to pay as soon as you register. 
Um, so that's uh, one thing to note um, you know, that I find we get that question a lot. Is there any other uh, very general questions that, that you get, Willa, that you wanted to go over, like th that most people would like to know? Um, I don't see general questions. I do see some um, specific questions um, about uh, personal circumstances. Um, so again, for those, it's best to email our office. So especially if you've completed some education already and you and you have certain goals and you don't know the next step toward achieving those goals, uh, you could definitely make an appointment with us um, to discuss what options at BCIT may suit your um, interests for sure. Um, if you're doing some professional development in order to meet some uh, requirements with um, an external organization, such as a, a regulatory body. Um, it's best to contact that regulatory body first to determine what their requirements are. Once you are clear about what their requirements are, um, you can come to us and we can answer um, any academic questions uh, that you have. But um, we won't be able to comment on a professional organization's uh, professional designation, uh, for instance. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's best to make an appointment um, if you have those individual questions, for sure. Um, I, I saw a question about financial aid um, for part time, and I believe that uh, Will had mentioned that uh, earlier. Um, that there is a, if you go to the um, financial aid website um, under student loans and grants, um, there is a section for part-time funding and they do have a list of eligible programs uh, under student loans and grants. So you can uh, take a look to see if the part-time program that you are interested in, in is eligible, but it's definitely best to call financial aid and awards or make an appointment it sounds like there's a lot of ways to get in touch with them. They, you can drop in in person as well. It's on the second floor of um, the main building, SW01. Um, so you can definitely drop in and talk to them and find out which program that could get student loan funding, as well as uh, if there's any grants you could apply to as a part-time study student. Uh, so sometimes there's also um, maybe a bursary. So definitely uh, connect with a financial aid office, that would be your best bet. Okay, so is there any other questions that we have a few uh, time for one more? Um, okay, um, sounds like we're, we're almost closing in on the questions and a lot of them we're seeing are a little bit more um, uh, it has to be individualized. Um, so I think we'll close this session um, this evening. Um, so again, um, I want to make sure if you have questions, please make sure that you email program advising. Um, it's program underscore advising at bcit.ca. Um, please make sure that uh, you let us know if you need help with anything, if you have any questions, if you need more individual assistance. Uh, we also have a virtual appointment available. We have callbacks. So there's a lot of ways to get help um, if you want to. So again, you can just start by simple email and we would definitely be happy to help you. Um, we're, we're a very um, uh, friendly and uh, supportive team of advisors. So we definitely um, would love you to reach out to us. So again, we would like to thank you so much for coming and taking time out of your busy schedules this evening to join us for BCIT 101. Uh, so you'll get to know more about program advising. And I also like to thank uh, my co-facilitator Willa for helping us out tonight and as well as um, all of the people that were working behind the scenes in program advising as well as uh, BCIT International. And also I'd like to thank marketing who's helped and thank you to Siobhan from Student Success and Student Life who um, did a great job telling us all about all the services that you can get as a BCIT part-time study student. So again, um, thank you so much for coming and have a great evening and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.